Hey y'all, Coach and Fire here. Got the whole family with me. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be in part two of our class on marriages. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking here at the verse back there, verse 19 from chapter 33. Remember how we were saying that those numbers at the bottom was pointing to the great book of true life from where this book originates from, right. you know, and how it could have other verses. Yes. Well, I decided to go over there and look to see. And there is the verse there. You could pretty much it starts off to you men and ends with. Through the love of both. So we see that's just verse 61. And then in verse 62. Now I am calling you to my kingdom so that you may be saved. But you must work and earn merits in order to climb toward the path of light that I have outlined for you. I anxiously await you. Come and you will be welcomed as obedient children and there will be rejoicing in heaven. So he's made this all part of the trial, all part of the the learning how it is to be human, so. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess that implies that one day we could have our own bride, mm -hmm. you know, in the spirit, you know, and then we would have to know how to treat her and we'd be able to reference this three-dimensional world as a reference. Anyway, let's go on to part two, which will be on woman, wife, and mother. Right. All right, so you want to go ahead and read verse 37? Woman, it is you who with your prayer protect what little peace there is in the world and who is faithful guardians of the home. Take care that it does not lack the warmth of love. In this way, you unite with Mary to break human arrogance. So if we go over to the great book of true life, we can see if it says anything else, like for instance, what it says there in verse 54. Men, I have made you lords on this earth so that you may represent me there. Is your spirit similar to that of the father and your body similar to the universe? Do not judge the perfection of your body by its dimensions, but by the wonderful life that exists in it its order and its harmony even in all its perfection the body is limited and the moment comes when it stops growing intelligence then continues to develop feelings until death stops him but all the wisdom and experience he acquired on earth is imprinted on the spirit which continues to grow and develop until eternity what do you think about that all right look at verse 55 Make your home a second temple, your affections a second worship. If you want to love me, love your wife and love your children, because great works, thoughts, and examples will also spring from that temple. What's the thing about that? It's expanding on what it said in the verse in verse thirty-seven, the third testament, to treat the um, house as the temple and. Extend your family to the rest of the home. Right. When it says the temple, does it mean like the kids or? It doesn't mean like treat your house as the temple. Yeah, it's saying make your home a second temple. Your first temple we know is your body. And it's saying, seems to be saying make your home your second temple. Huh. And good things will spring out of it. It says, love your wife and love your children because great works, thoughts, and example will spring, yes, from your temple. Yes. You guys are right. I mean, it's, 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 it's expounding on the family, not only saying, do we have to take care of our family in this manner, like we learned back up there in verse 50, you know, in the other, in the other section, but it's kind of expanding on the idea that the family is the image of his creation whereas you have the man who would represent him the woman who would represent the earth or the universe and the children who would represent the seed who would, who would carry the spirits on and so by treating your household in this manner then like Journey pointed out 
good things will start to happen. All right, let's look at verse 38. You woman who water the roads of this world with your tears and with your blood mark your passage through this life. Rest in me to recover new strength and continue being the bearers of love, the fire of the hearth, and the solid foundation of the home that I have entrusted to you on earth, so that you may continue being like a mother bird, spreading her wings to protect her husband and children. I bless you. See, women are built in this manner, whereas men aren't. See, we're take action. When things go wrong, we have to do something. We're not really allowed to stay there and wait for somebody else to take care of it for us. Whereas, that's what we're expected to do when it comes to our Father in Heaven. We're not expected to take action and do stuff. Else, we'd all be a little bit zealous, right? So, in a way, we have to take on a kind of a feminine spirit when it comes to a lot of this stuff. And just relax and leave it in the hands of our husband, which women typically do. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's a bump in the middle of the night, both of us hear it. If I don't get up, what's her chances of getting up? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, because she's built like that. Right. Like Mother Nature. Yeah. Expand on that. What do you mean? Like, Mother Nature is just like calm and right. needing somebody to maybe care for it and Don't stuff like the soil mm -hmm. and it doesn't do the things on its own yeah it's a place of rest a place of peace a place of beauty a place um, that requires nourishment mm -hmm. um, so yeah and and whereas the seed is planted and it takes care of the seed once it's planted. Right. Oh, I get it now. All right. Verse 39. I exalt the man and the place of the woman at his right. I sanctify marriage and bless the family. The woman at his right? That's significant. That's very significant. Why? Why? Why are you saying that? Because... I think at one time or even today in some uh, nations or, you know, even in ours to an extent, extent, the woman is not necessarily seen as a companion to the man, which, you know, is stated that in our last lesson. I think it was actually the first verse where it states that she's a companion. Mm -hmm. And though she is... Um, you know, a lot of times a woman is seen outside of her role. We both have roles and the man is over the woman. He's the head and she's weaker, but she's also a, um, I don't know the what right word, what's the right word to use of the most high. And so, she's not necessarily, he didn't, not, he didn't say, put her behind you. You know, uh, you know, you see where I'm trying to go? Mm -hmm. that she's that supposed she, to compliment the she's, man. She's a, she compliments him. Just like the Messiah is at the right hand of the Most High. Mm -hmm. um, not behind him, though we know that he is not the Most High, in a sense. Um, he's he's at his right. If that I don't I don't necessarily know how to say it, but I I do know what my thoughts are. Well, I see what you're saying because in a lot of cultures, especially the far eastern cultures, the woman is seen as being behind the man. And when we start speaking on holy things, a lot of people think that's the case. You know. That the woman is supposed to get away from out front and actually go all the way back behind the man. And that's not the case. We were always supposed to be walking side by side. It's just that in the Garden of Eden, you know, you had the transgression where now because of this and because of that, the man has ruled over her. But that don't mean she's behind him. 
She's still beside. She may even jump out front every once in a while. But it's now his responsibility to say, hey, 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 wait, wait. Let me come up there with you. Yeah. Get, get some. But see, they're supposed to walk together. Mm -hmm. Now, see, you're surprised that they're actually walking together. I'm not at all. We're always supposed to walk together. What I'm surprised is, is that she's on the right hand opposed to the left. I always thought that she was on the left because the man's right hand is a strong hand. His right hand is where he carries the sword. His right hand is where he always keeps his strength. When we're at battle, the, the, right, the one who's on the right hand is the one who's riding shotgun. So he can stick his arm out the window and do all of the fight. Goom, 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 goom. While the one who is weaker is actually doing the driving. And this, the warrior, is always to the right. That's why you wind up in a, in a platoon with your biggest, most strongest we're sitting right beside the platoon leader and then you start marching down unless you're about to take a picture then they don't care about the platoon leader and they put his little short butt all the way back to the end of the platoon and put the biggest and the strongest on the right so that's why i'm saying the biggest and the strongest in my opinion has always been on the right but you're saying now that the woman maybe is it, on the right were you about to say something oh maybe maybe it says that Pulling from where it says that um, in verse 37, it says, Woman, it is you who with your prayer protects what little peace there is in this world and whose faithful guardian of the home take care of it, that it does not lack the warmth of love. Maybe it has something to do with that, um, but. Um, yeah, I believe you're right. It does have something to do with that. That's exactly what it's saying. So the weapon is different now. If we were yielding a sword, we would have to say move, else we would cut you. Right. You need to move to the left unless, we, unless we're left-handed. Mm -hmm. But now that the weapon is something different, yeah, I can see how, okay. So you got you you guys are leading the way then, kind of. Well, we can well, relax. Well, we are, I would say, walking alongside you, not nips. On, on the right the side. Way, right? You're on the right, though. You're on the strength side now. So and that's it's like the woman is amplifying the love that the man is putting out. Well, yeah, and that's like we were saying earlier, you guys are built like that. You built to, to do that. Mm -hmm. You're built to be home praying opposed to out there fighting. Right. But the fight is 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 the weapons now are prayer first, mm -hmm. fight second. Yeah, in one scripture, I think it's chapter seventeen, where it says that our greatest our greatest weapon um today is prayer and our second no, it's the law. No, it says the law is our greatest weapon and prayer is our second one. So Yeah, those are the weapons. In this era, I come with a sword of love to put all things in their place, for men have put them elsewhere. Yeah, we put in the other sword first. So now he's come to put this sword of first. This kind of, he's come to put this sword first. Sword of love. Truly I tell you that the regeneration of humanity must begin with the woman so that her fruit which are the men of tomorrow are found free of the stains that have led them to degeneration. Now, this sounds like it's along the same lines, but it's not. Right. This is a stark shift in what yeah. he's saying here. We can actually start a whole new class on it. In fact, we have to if we actually plan on talking about this verse, because now it's talking about keeping the law and how it is up to woman, right. up to the woman to reprogram humanity from where we're at now to different. And I'm looking starkly right at Journey because it will be what he's saying is that you're going to raise your boys different. Whereas the boys of today was raised in, I'm going to say this Atari kind of mindset. You're going to put them back into the real stuff, the, his stuff, you know, starting with the law, of course. But I don't want to just limit it there because you're going to start to learn the letters. They'll learn the calendar. They'll learn the celestials. They'll learn all kinds of stuff. You know, that he put here for us, but has been hidden along the way. He's saying that you guys will find this stuff important. And then once you start raising your children in this manner, it's going to reprogram humanity. And they'll teach their kids? Absolutely. It's going to go. Mm -hmm. And all of the people who were otherwise trying to make it difficult for you, they're going to be gone. So it'll be generally easier. All right. Then it will correspond to men to do their part in this work of reconstruction. For all who have corrupted a woman must regenerate her. So now we're back on the lines of what we were talking about. And 
our part in all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, because one thing that's necessary in all of this is everybody taking their rightful responsibilities. Like he was saying, or like we like it was implied earlier, our families is set up as a structure similar to where the universe is, the multiverse is, where you have a a a father, a mother, and the children. Right. You know, just on a higher dimensional level. So that's where the men come in, is that we need to help the woman to recognize her role, her understanding, seeing herself more as a mother nature kind of figure. Right. Opposed to like what you said earlier, a more masculine figure, or what you said in the other video, mm -hmm. a more masculine figure, they're getting back to this more feminine. Nurturing. Nurturing. Yeah. Today I have inspired you to save the woman who has stumbled on her path. And when you present her to me, whom you have saved, I will give her a flower, a blessing, and a very great peace so that she will not fall again. So, basically undoing what has been done. Just, all we have to do is understand how this has been done to her. And if we talk to her for a minute, she'll probably tell us mm -hmm. what's happened to her over the course of her life, you know. Yeah. And what's happened, then all we really need to know is that the answer is going to be in the covenant and the law. Yeah. You know, healing and understanding going forward and everything going to be all right, no matter what she's been through. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the solution and the answer is to that the reason why you got off track in the first place is because you were outside of the law. You can, you know, blame your daddy, your brother, your dad, your husband or whoever. Mm -hmm. But. What's more important now is understanding how do we get back? And it's going to take the, the man, the head of the house, mm -hmm. to basically do his responsibility. And that's leading her back. He has to lead her back so that now she can lead the children back. Right. right. Mm. It's just, you know, human nature that it has to be done like this. And, you know, I can feel the ire of those who want to argue some of these points. But, you know, I think that was Genesis chapter one of chapter two. When he said that I have rule over you. Right. And, and that we fully expect that to happen until the pole shift. And once the pole shift comes, we know it's my understanding that things will, will change. But until then, we have this regeneration to do. That we must do it says you wanna go on if you fulfill this mission in this way those being wounded by the world will feel the love of the messiah into their hearts yeah so in other words if we start to rejuvenate her in this way you know she'll start to feel it and we can we can understand it if you go down yeah. to the their places of mire and find a woman who is you know willing to pay attention to all you know listen to you for a few moments you know as you love on her she's actually going to start feeling his love she'll start to recognize it you know it's already there but she'll start to sense it right. Right. i shall listen when in their prayers they tell me my father do not see my sin see only my pain do not judge my ingratitude but see my suffering in that instant my comfort will descend to that troubled heart and it will be purified by its tears oh if you only knew how much more the prayer of a sinner is felt than that of the vain who believe themselves just and clean. So now here's a key verse because this is what he says he's doing. He's listening to them mm -hmm. in their prayers, mm -hmm. waiting for them to basically realize the state that they're in, come to this repented heart. You know, not trying to say I'm justified this or justified that or, you know, I'm purified this or purified that. It's basically say I'm here. Take me as I am. Yeah. Because yeah. in the end, it lets you know that even if two people do the same thing, make the same transgression, if one's repentant and the other one's justifying themselves, they're going to be treated differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. 46. Of the love with which I have given you life, men give little sign or evidence. Of all human emotions, 
that which come closest to the divine love is maternal love. For in it is disinterest, abnegation, and the idea of seeking the happiness of the child, even at the cost of sacrifice. And I think that definitely uh, mimics the maternal love about how a mother will go way beyond sometimes, you know, even what she should for the sake of the happiness of her child, mm -hmm. even to the detriment sometimes of the child as well as herself. Then we think about the Messiah and the Most High, how the maternal love the, the of him sacrificing um, what we know as the begotten son. It was just a sacrifice that the maternal love of the father gave uh, for us as his children. And then the next verses is for those who are waiting for the opportunity to become mothers. And to you, sterile woman, the master says, how long have you desired and asked that your wounds be converted into fountains of life? You have hoped that when the evening or the morning approaches, a tender heart will be heard beating within you. But the days and nights have passed and you have only shed tears because the child has not arrived to call at your door. Yeah. So we have to remember the stories of the Bible when people were barren. You know, it was always when there was something important going on. Mostly it was the child that was really important. Right. And they just had to wait for the right spirit. Yeah. And so, and, right. And so we're told that, you know, now is not the time to be, you know, rushing out and having a lot of families anyway. And so that could be the reason for their barrenness is our father is waiting for the child to be born in a kingdom of heaven type environment. But let's see what verse 48 says. How many of you who are listening to me and who have been deprived of hope by science will have to bear fruit to believe in my power. Thus, through that miracle, many may recognize me. Watch and wait, do not forget my words. So, yeah, this is part of his plan. Mm -hmm. But that's gonna do it for this section. And in the next one, we'll be talking about children and adolescents. Right, that would right. be a very important uh, class because of the I could say the state of children today. All right. All right. So if you got anything out of this video, please leave us a comment below. Remember to stop by the website, coachingthefight.shop, where we have lots of not only um, free downloads, but we have the Celestial Clock Calendar, which will be um, handy for you at this time of yeah. the feast days coming up. As well as um, in the comment section below, you will see a link to where you can purchase um, this third testament where we're reading from. So we'll see you over there. Shalawama. Happy Sabbath day. Wow. See you next time. <laughs>